Marquise Noel is the perfect player to watch if you're a shorter guard. And it's crazy because although he kind of popped off in the tournament, He's been doing this. I've been tuned in since high school, keeping tabs on him, studying his game a little bit. And it's kind of a perfect mix between feel for the game, crazy mentality, and then just overall skill, being able to make tough shots, using the fact that he's a small guard to his advantage. So I'm gonna break down how he does this at such a high level, how he literally uses what most people would consider a negative to be a positive, and then a little bit about how you can apply this into your game as well. Let's get to it. So first off, understand that a lot of this low-key comes from his ability to shoot. And not only shoot, but shoot from deeper range. This really brings defenders out now that he's a threat from out here. And because of this, he's able to use his speed a little bit more. It extends the defense out. Everything becomes a little bit more of a threat. So a great first place to start as a smaller guard is to develop crazy shooting range, whether it's off the dribble, off the catch, whatever. So first off, let's dissect his pick and roll game. And I think sometimes we can make the pick and roll harder than it is, or at least the process of deciding what read to make. There are so many options that it can almost be a paralysis by analysis type situation. But what he's really good at is realizing if this little pocket of space is open on that three point line, making that shot his first option. If it's open, you better believe most of the time he's gonna shoot that. And of course, he's able to knock this down at a high clip, although it's a low-key tougher shot than we'd expect at times. Then, of course, if another opportunity presents itself, he's ready for this. So this could be a straight line attack of that hedge defender, just using his speed to get by, splitting that screen, which seems like a go-to if the big even leaves a little bit of space, yet another benefit of being a smaller guard and being able to push through these small spaces, and a lot more options, of course, that we'll continue to touch on. So I'm not saying he goes in with tunnel vision or a pre-planned decision, but he makes simple his first option at times, and that helps him expand off of that. Also, going back to splitting that screen, it's important to realize that it's not always going to be at that same angle that we train. Kind of coming off the screen parallel to the baseline and then taking a 90 degree turn. No, he's constantly splitting these screens at different angles, working with different amounts of space. So it's important that we prepare for this. You also notice that a lot of his screens are pretty high out super high ball screens and this seems like it allows not only for more space to get into one of these pull-up threes but also to gain some downhill momentum to use his speed and attacking a flat-footed big man and escaping from his trailing defender who probably just lost some of their momentum getting hit on that screen i mean in general if you're just a faster player having more room to work with is almost always good because you have more space to use your speed and even if you don't get past them most times they'll get turned into a really high speed sprint to stop you and this can happen and having these higher ball screens makes splits easier since it's a much slighter change of direction than a 90 degree turn. So a lot of benefits here from a bit higher of a ball screen when possible. Also notice how he doesn't always use the screen. And I'm not even talking your standard rejection of your screen like this. Sometimes he'll literally just go. When you're so dangerous off the pick and roll like he is, the defense is usually preoccupied and definitely setting up for you to use that screen. Not for you to put your foot on the gas and blow by them this way. Or on this same note, sometimes they'll just shoot it as that screen is getting set. Again, most times if they're preparing for that screen, they're going to be preoccupied. You're going to have some space and some time. So he's comfortable with this clearly and again can shoot from range. So this is a great option. And circling back to some of the other decisions or options off of the screen, sometimes you'll see him use what I call a defensive stance by having his back to the defender coming off of that screen. This does a couple things, but number one allows him to protect as he gets a feel for the situation. On top of this, many defenders kind of fall asleep here because they feel like he's not gonna attack from this position, and they're wrong. In fact, it seems like he's very comfortable exploding from this position, as are many guards. All right, so let's get into his finishing a little bit, which is super interesting, again, being a smaller guard. Number one, he's great at using the entirety of the glass, even outside of that square on the backboard. This is needed for small guards, not only to get it higher off the glass and over shot blockers, but because being further away from the rim, it's gonna take a bit of creativity to get the right angle on it. So being able to spin it off of the right or the left side of the glass at crazy angles may be very important. Also notice how he uses that right foot, right hand layup a ton for creativity and unpredictability, but also for stability. Sometimes this outside foot may not get you up as high, it's gonna be harder to jump, but this can help you create contact easier if you're gonna go off one foot because you can create momentum in this direction. It's the outside foot. And speaking of unpredictability, these inside hand lays are a big part of the finishing toolbox for him as with any elite guard who's able to sneak finishes in around the trees. But sometimes it's not about just being unpredictable. It's about creating that contact, being a heat-seeking missile, not waiting for them to go to you, but using contact to get the big on their heels and then really extending out from there. Again, if you're not the one initiating contact on the finish, as a small guard, it's gonna be tough. And he's great at this. 
Also watch his control at high speeds. A lot of time at higher speeds, our brain just wants to focus on protecting ourselves. So you gotta be really controlled and skilled to finish lays like this that require high levels of touch at high speeds with contact. But this fearlessness is what you need as a smaller guard, right? If you're constantly worried about getting blocked, that extra millisecond of hesitation probably will get you blocked. The best sub six foot guards like Noel are amazing at getting down there with no second thought and figuring it out on the spot at high speeds. And because of this, they become amazing shot makers. It takes a ton of experience and time to do so. Over the course of a career, there's a certain level of adaptability that's developed just by finishing over and over and over again around bigger players. All right, now on to his passing. So the first thing I'll say is that literally none of this is possible without his ability to get to the bucket. Sometimes we tend to think of passing as something that just happens, like teammates magically get open and we find them. But we can wait on these opportunities or we can create them. We can get moving towards the paint, collapse the defense, and then find our teammates who will undoubtedly be open now. So I'll say this, if you want to become a better passer, a legit first step may be to get really good at attacking downhill and pass defenders like Noel is, and then training your decision making from there. But of course, there's a lot more to it. I don't want to oversimplify everything, but that's an important place to start. Next, I'd say watch the delivery, how he's able to get the ball to his teammates no matter where he's at, and how many defenders are going for that deflection. This is where learning to deliver the ball with one hand passes, jump passes, overhead passes, and much more is so important. On one hand passes, for example, a simple action of having to get a second hand on the ball takes two or three hundredths of a second that could be vital for getting a pass through. And speaking of timing, his passes are almost always right on time. Like you're seeing, if he delivers any of these passes too early, or too late, literally by a millisecond at times, it's a turnover rather than an easy assist. This is something that again comes with a ton of experience and pickup games and watching hoops and understanding patterns, but it's definitely a trait that you can develop. And then in between getting teammates open and delivering the pass is being able to identify which teammates are open. Like here, his teammate isn't even in his vision, so how does he know he's open? Well, number one is understanding patterns. Usually on this type of drive, if the corner man leaves, your teammate's going to spot up a little bit higher on the wing. He knows that. But even more interesting is understanding that he doesn't seem to be only looking for open teammates, but more importantly, they're collapsed defenders. This is why players seem like they have eyes on the back of their head sometimes. Because even if they don't see their teammates open per se, they saw them earlier in the play, and they know where their corresponding defender is. And it's not with them. Then you'll also notice that he's really good at orchestrating from the perimeter. So yes, he gets downhill and collapses, but he can also make these passes from further out. And again, this comes down to understanding patterns, being super in tune with your teammates, when they're gonna cut, the angles they're gonna cut, the timing with which they're gonna cut, and then being able to deliver longer, accurate passes by leading your teammates. And then lastly, this one's a bit boring from the surface, but it's truly a quality of any great passer. He just makes the easy pass as well. It's not always crazy dimes, it's accumulating quality passes for teammates to score easily, which is actually much harder than it seems at this level. And then lastly, quickly how he gets downhill off the bounce. Number one, his footwork is super clean. So whether it's kind of replacing his feet here to get into a perfect acceleration position, explode out of somewhat weird positions, those first, second, and third steps are always impressive. Also notice how as he's exploding, he's really good at letting the ball float here. So he doesn't have to take that second dribble to slow him down. That ball is just kind of spinning in his hand, which helps him accelerate a little bit quicker. Then look at the rhythm that he's going with here. He kind of creates that rhythm. So it's like a one, two, three, four, and then break that rhythm and go. If he can get this quick step, he knows that he can then use his speed to create the rest of the space. And then lastly, he's comfortable being in close quarters. In fact, he seems to embrace it and go for it. And because of this, he draws a ton of fouls, yes, around the rim, but even more impressively, off the bounce. As he's driving past defenders, he'll attack their top foot or whatever the situation may be, keep the ball wide but in control to ensure they can't get to it. And then a lot of the time here, since he's so tight to them and right by their hip, they'll either reach or bump him and he'll get an easy foul call here. And if he doesn't, he's right by them. He's able to use, again, the ability to initiate contact off the bounce to take these tight angles and get downhill. So these are all things that are crazy impressive to see at this level. And I'm excited to see how he's gonna progress moving forward. I don't think there's really a limit to the level that he can play at with his skill, feel for the game, 
and overall mentality. Not only was the tournament fun to watch, but it's been cool to see his progression over time as well. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. As always, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Basketball for a lot more. Stay tuned.